Mr. Happy Living here. I love entrepreneurs and artists and midlife courage coaches and innovators and people from every walk of life that have discovered their reason for being on this planet. And that's why I love Cherie Clark. She's an entrepreneur and just happens to be a midlife courage coach too. Can you believe it? So Cherie, welcome to the Something Significant Show. Oh, thank you, Matt. It's my pleasure to be here with you. Very good. So tell our viewers and listeners about yourself and the exciting things you're doing to contribute to the world these days. Oh, thanks. Well, I have an exciting life indeed. Uh, as you alluded to, uh, my, the title that I've given myself because Queen was taken is um, Midlife Courage Coach. And I gave myself that title because I work with primarily women, some men as well. But um, I believe that it takes guts to live the second half of your life for you, especially when you've lived the first half for everyone else. Mm. And typically what I find is by the time people have reached what we call midlife, they have given away a substantial part of themselves to different roles. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I find that creating and, and building a, a long, a happy life takes a lifetime. So let's, and so let's look backwards a little bit. And what were you doing, uh, let's say, 10 years ago, back in 2010? How was your okay. life different? Wow. Okay. You're going to take me in the way back machine. Okay. So in 2010, because this is 2020, that was 10 years ago. So um, I was actually going through a pretty significant life transition myself. So, um, and I don't know what it is about years that end in zero, but evidently <laughs> they must be transitional portals for me. So in 2010, I had just gotten out of a 25 year business. Um, I had owned an advertising agency and I had owned it with a business partner. And I had announced at the end of 2009 that I wanted to do something else. And so I took, uh, I left there in October, took a couple months off. And then in the beginning of 2010, I started, I actually became a coach, but I wasn't a midlife courage coach. I was a health and nutrition coach. Mm. And I, that, that was how I, that was the transition that I wanted to make. Um, and then I came to the realization, well, I don't want to get too far out of 2010. I'll finish that thought because I'll let you ask the questions. But um, it, at the end of, at uh, a certain period in time, I discovered that helping people with nutrition and food wasn't where my passion was mm. um, because there were other issues that created those difficulties that the people were having anyway. So I wanted to deal with the root of the problem. Uh, great. So let's do a, one more step backwards. How about 2000, 20 years ago, what were you doing then? You were in your advertising agency and, and what else was different in your life? I was, and you picked the zero years, didn't you? So, um, so the, so 2000, I had just published my third book. Um, I've, I've actually been published three times in all those times were in the advertising business. Um, they were primarily uh, trade publications or trade mm -hmm. books for people in that that realm. And so while that was an exciting time for me, it was also the very first moment or the moments when I had that niggling feeling in my head that what I was doing wasn't what I was put here to do. And mm. that that wasn't exactly, I wasn't on the right path. And I didn't really know how to get on that path. Did you know what the path was? No, just I just knew that I was on the wrong one. So that brings me to my next question is, could, you know, we think 20 years ago, could you ever have imagined that version of Sherry, of Sherry Clark being on a show like this, talking to others and sharing your story and inspiring them to create the life of their dreams? Heck no, because when you're in that place, when you are not feeling your, your full potential, you can't imagine that there's another place. Right. You can't imagine that you can be out the other side, that there is, that we were put here on this planet to be happy yeah. and um, that the universe is conspiring for us to have that. And when we are feeling that disconnect or that disjoint, it's a signal to correct. It's not, it's not bad. You're it's, giving me goosebumps. That's exactly right. Yes. It's, you got to pay attention to those signals. Got to pay attention to them. 
Right. It's kind of like when your car makes a, a terrible noise and you think to yourself, oh, this is awful. My car is making a terrible noise. No, it's good that your car is making a terrible noise. The car is tapping you on the shoulder saying, hey, I need to go into the shop. And the, and the right answer just, is I not- just turn up. I just turn up the radio. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you Bingo. <laughs> Okay, so this is a something significant show. And so let me define significance. The way I view it, it contains four elements. Doing things you love, with people you love, in places you love, and that's awesome. But then the fourth element is creating something of value to others. So it's doing and it's giving. But to be a giver, you need excess capacity in your life. Excess capacity. So What personal practices do you have, physical, mental, spiritual, financial, emotional? What are your practices for increasing your capacity so you can be a giver in life? I love that question. So um, I have a lot of practices that I do, and it's really good for me that we're having this conversation because it reminds me that sometimes the problem that I have is consistency. And I'm guessing I'm hitting a hot button, maybe with someone listening, that we know what we're supposed to do, but staying on that path is not always easy. And what's, what happens is you fall off one day and it's really easy for it to, then the next day is easier. And then before you know it, you've gotten some bad habits, but let me tell you about my good habits. So um, for me, the, one of the most important things is my physical, the, the, my container, my body. Um, I need to keep myself in good physical condition. Um, I am in my sixth decade of life and experience on this planet. And so that means that there are some things that I can't get away with any longer, like eating junk food or staying out too late and skipping sleep and those kinds of things. So for me, um, my day looks like getting up early. I love the sunrise and I love to walk and I don't do, I've given up coffee recently and hopefully Mm -hmm if you hit me up again in a year and ask me if that stayed, if I've stayed the course on that, I'll be able to say yes. Um, And so the physical things are are among the most important. Those are the baseline for me. I need to be healthy because I can be alert. And, and then, so are there other practices that you want me to share? Give us a couple more. Okay. So I also like to expand my mind. That to me is, Um, And and to me, expanding my mind, oftentimes reading something that is insightful or spiritual. Um, Right now I'm reading a memoir of um, someone who survived the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And I find that to be uplifting. I told a friend of mine that and, and she said, oh, isn't that depressing? And I said, no, the person came out the other side with a really positive outlook on life. So it's absolutely, it's inspiring. And you know, it, it really kind of frames for us. What's the name of the book? It's called Courage. Okay. No, it's not called Courage. It's called Choice. Sorry. I, it was, I'm a courage coach. And so when I see the words that start Everything with Everything Courage. Yes, Courage. <laughs> so Choice is the name of the book. Okay. So, um, and she is really, it's a, her Dr. Ava, I just started it. So, but I've, I'm loving it and it's inspirational. And so I look for things like that, um, mm-hmm. that will keep me grounded, keep me connected, keep me from spiraling in my own stuff, because that's, a, that's one of the dangers. That's one of the things that can take you away from happiness is if you get in the spin cycle for me anyway, and start dwelling on, well, this is wrong and that's wrong. And this isn't right. And I'm not good at this. And all this is, when's this going to get right? And rather than that, to look outward. And then, so that brings me to the third one. And the third one would be doing things for others. So another way I get outside of myself is to remind myself when I'm hung up and thinking, oh, it's all about me (laughs) and it's not going the way I want it to, is to serve, to do something. And, And it might be a random act of kindness, extra points if it's anonymous and the person doesn't know. Or it could be volunteering when we're able to do those kinds of things in person, or the volunteering could be something that you do online. Yeah, it's just uplifting. Um, you made me think of two things. One is in terms of capacity building, you know, oftentimes we're told, well, you need to jog, or you need to eat this way or do this. What I've been learning about, maybe you can just say, if, give us a few seconds on it. I've been learning to, there's so many different things that I can do to improve my life. Let me choose the ones that make me feel good. And so if I'm doing something good that makes me feel bad, I'm not going to, I can't keep it up. It's not sustainable. Exactly. So maybe share your experience on that. 
Oh, yeah. It's, well, one of the things that I counsel my clients to not do is to should all over themselves um, because we, that's a, it's a bad practice. So an example for me is I used to be a runner and um, I was pretty, pretty serious about it. I ran six miles a day every single day, didn't take a day off. Um, the only times I didn't run would be is I live in a four season state. So if there was ice outside, I didn't want to run on ice because that's dangerous or if there was lightning. And usually if there's lightning, if you wait long enough, it goes away. So you can still run that same day. And it got to the point where it wasn't serving me any longer. Um, mm -hmm. it, my body, when you get to, for me anyway, I got to an, a point, an age where it wasn't, it didn't feel as good as it used to. Um, it was taking more from me than it was giving to me, but I had this thing in my head yeah. that I needed to keep running and I was a runner and that was how I defined myself and <laughs> dang it. And so, um, I finally had to come to terms and to grips with that this isn't serving me. And so what I ended up doing was, and, and I've actually written about this, I, changed, I turned to walking, which at first felt like a failure. It felt like I, I've given up. I, you know, I'm, I'm throw me in the trash heap. I'm old now. But the reality is, is that what, what I was getting out of it now was different and greater. So using a different measuring stick is one of the things that is important. Now, instead of go, when I, I still walk, now when I go out, instead of pounding down the miles and listening to really loud um, headbanging music, I don't listen to anything except nature. Mm -hmm. I work with my thoughts. I write things in my head. And when I come back, I sit at the keyboard and they're brilliant. And so my life has changed. I have changed. My practices have to change. That's a hundred percent. I know. I remember when I transferred from running to, to walking because I had back surgery, it forced it on me and I couldn't even call it walking. I called it hiking because it was more masculine and it sounded like it was, you know, more acceptable. Um, so we have to, we have to change with the times. And, and when you do, when you accept it, it actually is a really good uplifting thing. You're not giving something up, you're getting something new. That's so true. And you know, it happens not just with our practices, but with the way that we view ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. there's a certain point in time when we have to face the fact that we are, like I said, you know, I'm in the middle of a decade. My next decades, my next birthday starts with my next big birthday starts with a seven. And that's a different decade. That is an adjustment. That is a reframing of mm -hmm things. It's not worse. It's actually good. I'm still here. <laughs> so, Absolutely right. Well, good stuff, Cherie. You know how much we love our sponsors. So let's take a, commercial, a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love Cassandrino's oil made from olives, soaked in the Grecian sun for months, and picked by hand with care. You'll love it too. Grab a bottle today and get 50% off your first subscription order. Shop the World Wide Web at Cassandrinos.com. That's K-A-S-A-N-D-R-I-N-O-S.com. Use coupon code HAPPYLIVING50 and I'll donate 15% off every order placed during the month of September to WYTV7. For now, let's get back to my special guest, Cherie Clark. And Cherie, as you know, in my second book, Turning Inspiration Into Action, I explore the idea that major life transformations and discovery of purpose often come from devastation, terrible illness, a sudden death, something horrible happens to shake your life. But a happier way to create transformation is using inspiration. So is there a specific moment or situation when you discovered your purpose, when you discovered the life you were meant to lead? Yes, absolutely. And um, mine wasn't the result of devastation. Mine was actually the slow build. And what's interesting is that your questions kind of um, pointed us in that direction here at the beginning. You asked me to recall 2010 and also the year 2000, the decade before. And so in the year 2000 was when I started to, I alluded to the fact that I felt that niggling feeling that I might be in the wrong place. But 
perhaps like many people, um, when I had that niggling feeling, I didn't do anything about it. I knew that I was in the wrong place, but I was, unfortunately, it sounds funny to say, unfortunately, with what's going to follow, but unfortunately, I was making good money. And unfortunately, I was uh, privileged enough to not have to make any changes. And unfortunately, I was healthy. So there wasn't the, the push, the impetus, the, all that, that, the whole big reason. So I found solutions. Um, I volunteered for things to distract me. So it's good, you know, I'm serving other people, but the real, my real motivation was to occupy my time. So I didn't think about how unhappy I was. Hmm. Well, that will work for a certain amount of time, but eventually at some point or another, the universe doesn't let you just sit there and, and sue. It, it will create some enough discomfort that you have to do something. And for me, the moment and the realization of that time came one morning when I was sitting in church and I was listening to a sermon and it wasn't because of anything profound that the pastor had said, although I'm sure there were some profound things said at the, on that sermon. But what happened to me that moment, that Sunday, was that I happened to glance down at my wristwatch to see what time it was. And I realized that in less than 24 hours, I had to be back in my the workplace that I had grown to dislike. And I owned the business. Mm-hmm. And it brought tears to my eyes to just think, oh my gosh, I've only got 24 hours of freedom left before I have to go back for another week of this. And I sat back and I thought to myself, if I feel this way, how do the people that work for me feel? What kind of an environment am I setting? What kind of a role model am I being? What am I doing to myself to live like this? And so that was my come to Jesus moment, I guess you could call it, when I made the decision that I had to do something because I, was, I, I wasn't serving anybody at this point. And within three months, I had gotten out of that business and done what I'm doing now. Right on, way to go. Um, and it's, so that's what I've been starting to call the happy formula. It's when you combine capacity, which we talked about earlier, with purpose, then the sky's the limit, right? Yes. But I believe the real magic in life comes from the fourth element of significance. So talk a little bit about how doing work that creates value for others, how that's brought joy and magic into your life. Oh, it's, it's not even measurable. So the coolest thing is, you know, obviously we, or I should, I say obviously, but maybe it's not obvious. Obviously when someone hires me to be their coach and they're my client, I want to make them happy. I mean, that's just kind of a no brainer factor of business. The most joyful parts for me or the moments, the kind of unexpected little gifts, pennies from heaven kind of thing are when someone says to me, they might quote me about something that I've said to someone else and they overheard, or they might have torn out uh, something that I wrote and put it on their bulletin board and they refer to it. Or there's some thing that I have suggested to somebody, maybe casually, maybe in passing, maybe it wasn't even anything I remember. And they recall it and they tell me it's made a difference in their life. And I think that that comes from living your authentic truth because I don't say things to be remembered or to be profound or to get famous or to do anything other than when you're living in your truth and you're engaged with another human being and genuinely care about them, when they come to you for assistance or when you offer something out there, it's in, from such a place of depth that it can't be wrong. And they, they feel it. And that's so I've, I've been called, so I've defined that as purpose, but lately I've been thinking about it is that's when you're in spirit. That's when, when the, the real you is totally present and that is, it's palpable. People can tell. Yes. It's fun. It's awesome. um, But it also, it also affects others. I mean, it's wonderful for you if you get there but it affects others as well. That's what you were talking about. So much. And, and Matt, I, I have it now because of the flow of our conversation, because we have 
like-minded purposes mm -hmm. and because we see so many things from a similar similar angle and yet you use different words and I use different and it's like yes yes and you have that moment where you're like I don't want it to end and you you lose track of time that's how you know you're there yeah very very good um, speaking of losing time let's wrap things up with a lightning round so what I'd like to do is read one of my very favorite quotes and then have you respond by telling us what it means to you. No more than 45 second answers, okay? So ready, Okay. set, go. Once you get where you want to be, you're not there anymore. Oh, <laughs> so that's kind of, that speaks into that the journey is the, the joy, that getting to some place, being a student, being, uh, soaking things up, learning, that's where the delicious part is. And that, and that, and I, I go, <clears throat> if I go over 45, <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that is kind of what we've been talking about. It's like learning and being a part of it and, and, it ha have a, it's cooking making the cake is just as cool as eating it <laughs> right on okay your day belongs to another's dream oh okay so i think that that speaks into i'm going to take that as meaning um me you're speaking into me and what i do for a livelihood which as a coach um when I, I'm helping people to get to their dreams, I feel sometimes like I'm a midwife or a doula. You know, I'm helping to birth something that somebody desperately wants and, and feels either afraid to get there or is uncertain about which steps to take or maybe just needs somebody to go, you can do it. So that's how I interpret that. Very good. You're perfect just as you are and you could use a little improvement. <laughs> um so i would say yes yeah, so that that sounds like um well we you've heard the expression you're perfect in god's eyes and so i think that we we are perfect beings but that doesn't mean we're done because once you're done why are you still here so um it means that you are you are something to be celebrated you're a joy you're a gift and if you wanted to up the ante a little bit, knock yourself out. Get after it. Yep. Okay. Let's do two more. A total acceptance of yourself brings about a total transcendence of yourself. Oh, okay. Yes. So that speaks into um, when we were talking about both of us being run runners and that whole period of time when you realize there's sometimes you have to let go of something to be able to receive something else. Um, and if you're clinging too tightly, you can't open your hand to receive. Right. And it's in the receiving that we're transcended. <clears throat> Very good. Okay, last one. Maybe my favorite of all time, whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness yep. has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Yes. Um, well, I'll just, I'll be a colloquialism, uh, paraphrase, what the hell are you waiting for? <laughs> um, <There> you, go. <laughs> you know, because it's, when I think about if I, I don't like to have regrets, but if you were to ask me if I could rewrite the script in the decade between 2010, 20, 2000 and 2010 that we've reflected on, I would have condensed that time frame. Now I'm not sorry and I don't beat myself up over it because that's not productive, but begin it is fabulous advice. Yeah, yeah, very good. Okay, Cherie, take us home here. Uh, in a minute or two, please share any parting remarks or comments that you'd like to leave our audience. So one of the things that I would say is um, it speaks into what you just asked me about, and that is, what are you waiting for? One of the things that we've learned during this pandemic, one of the many things that we have learned, is that absolutely nothing is certain. There are no guarantees. 
There are everything that we believed to be true, that we hung our hopes and our dreams on could be gone in an instant. You could be gone in an instant. So rather than wait for the perfect time, the perfect uh, chemistry of things to come together, wait, rather than waiting for Friday or until the kids graduate or until the baby's born or until the divorce is final or the mortgage is paid off, rather than <laughs> wait for anything that you're waiting for to begin to live the authentic life that you believe that you're here for, stop that because it may not wait for you. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All right, everyone, we've reached the end again. Uh, if you're inspired by today's show, please donate what you can to WITV7 so we can keep reaching ordinary people ready to create their extraordinary lives. Or you could just buy tons of olive oil and I'll do the donating. Thank you, Cherie. You're an inspiration to me and an amazing resource for anybody feeling like they're at a fork in the road. I want to also thank WITV7 for hosting and promoting our show. And a special thank you to our sponsors for the entire month of September, Cassandrino's Olive Oil and Happy Living. Remember, the more you buy, the more I'll donate. So stock up and tell your friends to buy some too. And most especially, thank you viewers and listeners. You'll find links to websites and social media and all things Cherie Clark. Find her, friend her, sign up for her newsletter that's packed with tips and advice to help you stay on track. And from me to you, dear friends, I love you and I want you to be happy. We do what we do here on the Something Significant show to inspire you to make the most out of your life, to believe as I do that a better self is always possible today and every day for the rest of our lives. And so... Whatever you can do or dream you can do, begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Begin it now. Till next time, I'm Matt Gersper. You are awesome, and this is the Something Significant Show.